This is the first spring since China optimized its COVID response. We're in Xicheng district in the heart of the Chinese capital. Communities are at grassroots level in this massive city. They're frontline outposts to serve the public. For staff here, protecting key groups is part of their daily routine. Xinjiakou Health Center serves nearly 85,000 residents. More than 13% of them are aged 65 or above. Dr. Cui Qi has been a general practitioner here for 15 years. She's on her way to visit an 83-year-old female patient who just recovered from COVID. In this new phase of COVID response, requirements on family visits have been greatly adjusted, adding the rising vaccination rate and immunity after the latest epidemic. Our service has been fully restored. With consent from the patient's family, we feel part of the visit. The patient has been suffering late-stage Alzheimer's for 10 years. She's in need of constant care due to her disability and dementia. Tsui says it's a miracle a patient of her condition has survived and recovered from COVID. Every slight change in her vital signs must be noted and dealt with in time. Diet and medication are also the doctor's concern. It's been a decade-long joint effort between the family and the doctor. So he never misses the twice-a-week home visits. When I was young, my parents would never give up on me when I was ill. Now it's my duty and priority to take care of my mother. Dr. Cui has given us so much help over the years. The community is also very supportive and helpful. This is why we live here. I think Xinjiakou Community Health Center is a model in taking care of the elderly. This wave of infections may be over, but the coronavirus still lurks. The community is obliged to raise awareness among the elderly and hear their concerns. I want to know if COVID will cause any after effects or long term harm to elderly people. I feel lack of physical energy after recovering from COVID. After a short distance stroll, I find myself breathing heavily. I often feel my stomach is distended and heavy fatigue after recovering from COVID. I want to know how I can recover better. Their concerns are quickly addressed. Vaccine boosters and medical knowledge on recovery are the topics of the day. Community health center experts give advice through vivid presentations. This is not impromptu. A schedule for the year has been set for lectures like this, featuring guest professionals. There was panic buying on medicines last December. There's no longer a shortage, but many wonder how ready is the community if another outbreak occurs? Dr. Sun Wei oversees the crucial work of securing sufficient supplies. This is our stock under the new COVID response. We must ensure two weeks supply. The stock includes both Western and Chinese patent medicines. We also have medicines for those aged 65 or above, especially those with chronic diseases or who are not fully vaccinated. We have sufficient supply to meet residents' need. Beijing has established a dynamic monitoring system. Communities must report changes in stock, the number of fever patients, supply and delivery requests every day. The city-level response to grassroots requests is quick. As we're fuming, another batch of supplies has arrived. Now it's time to find out the role of traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, in China's new phase of COVID response. This is Guangwai Hospital in Xicheng District. It was highly recommended to me as a role model in exploring a TCM approach in COVID response in an 
innovative, comprehensive and integrated way. The hospital has all its TCM departments lined up in this comprehensive treatment area. I saw many positive reviews about this hospital's TCM department. I've received five rounds of acupuncture here. This has greatly improved my sleep and tachycardia after being infected by COVID. Dr. Zhang Er tells us how different TCM practices have alleviated COVID symptoms. This room is for spinal decompression. It can reduce neck and lumbar pain. This room integrates TCM and Western medicine with help from equipment. Tuina and physical therapies are other ways that can ease sore and painful muscles. This is the acupuncture room. Due to patient symptoms, we can apply different techniques like needling, cupping and moxibustion. We spent almost a day checking out some crucial links in China's updated response to COVID. As the country forges ahead to boost the socio-economic recovery, the measures are in place to safeguard people's lives and their pursuit of optimal health. Pandong CGTN, Beijing.